Since the unboxing video of the LetPots LPH Max, I can't stand to have just one, so now there's two. This is such an amazing garden. Previously to this, I picked up several of the uh, market-leading gardens, but these two models have advanced features that just blow everything else away. Once everything's unpacked, it's very straightforward. On the back of the unit, there are a couple sites. This one, of course, is the power supply. The power supply has a fairly long cord, and so it's very uh, simple to uh, plug this into a nearby outlet, and it just fastens down in like that. Now, the other side on the right has a little hose barb. Rubber on one side, and has a metal tip on the other side that uh, has an opening on it. So what this does is I take the rubber piece side and thread that down through the collar onto the hose barb. When raising the light, it's a good idea to support the deck by pushing down on the back and then pulling up from the center and that will extend the telescoping pole that the light's on, which goes up quite a ways. The deck just lifts up and off all 21 sight. There are three pumps. Pump that you see here is for circulation. The pump that's inside this chamber is the one that automatically feeds your plants. You put nutrients into it. And the pump over here comes through up to this piece that shoots out, and that is what goes along with the tubing. The tubing just drops into a reservoir that you come up with. It could be anywhere from a one gallon size clear up to 500 gallons. Depends on a couple things. One, uh, how much hands off do you want to be with your system? And uh, two, how much water can you deal with, you know, if it uh, happens to uh, come up and, and out? Because with this system, it uh, will refill based off of a float valve that's right in the front of it and refill every time this chamber is low. I have my garden set up. And the container that I selected for a reservoir is the white one that is uh, on the floor beside it. Just a quick note, make sure that your reservoir sits below the height of your garden because uh, you do not want to create a siphon action. The pump will pull up water even if the tube is empty. Eventually, I will put a container with a lid on the top. Because there's no nutrient in here, I'm not as worried about algae forming, and there's no light that is directly above it as well. The little metal extension on the end of the tube helps to hold the tubing down in the water. Whether you're using the automatic feature or manually filling the water, there are some electrical contacts that come up, and you want to make sure that you do not overfill your water and short those out. It has several useful details. You can set the time, the growing days, Celsius or Fahrenheit, whether you're doing uh, veg growth or fruiting and flowering, the water level, the brightness of the light. Even though it's 36 watts, you can dial that up and down on several different levels, uh, indicates which one you're on. 36 watts, which can be dialed up and down, and the uh, little indicators on the display here tell you how bright, and the uh, pump mode over here says operating. It does have energy saver, so if you have this in a bedroom, you don't want that uh, bright display on, even with the light off, it will automatically dim. The button on the right-hand side switches between the cooler vegetative and the warmer fruiting and flowering. The pump goes from do not disturb to operating. The next button over changes the temperature back and forth from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And then the fifth button over 
allows you to go around this display and with the down and the up arrows modify the display. So I'm going to go ahead and set the time and we'll get this uh, ready to uh, fill up with water and we'll take a look at that next. So currently I have my lights set to come on at 5 a.m. for 16 hours and the automatic mode if you want to set this you could do it off this display as a matter of fact there's an app on a phone that can pair with it so you could do all this from your smartphone but to illustrate what we're doing today let's go ahead and set the automatic mode using the display so let's go to the third button over and I'm going to press and hold that. And there it goes. So this jet of water that is coming up and filling the bowl is coming out of that white reservoir that I had showed you just a few minutes ago. And it is going to raise the level of the water up to operations. And the float valve is going to kick off the water flow. And this is how it automatically keeps your grow bowl filled for your plants. While that's filling, this is the inside of the food reservoir. That's where pump number two is at. Pump number one, the circulation pump, is now sensing that there's enough water in the unit to start flowing. And you can see that it jets considerably. Using plant food A, in B, I've already uh, mixed the dry pellets with water. And so now that they're all mixed up, I'm taking uh, 50 milliliters of A and putting that into the uh, plant food chamber. I'm gonna repeat that process using plant food B. The measuring glass that I have did not come with the unit. It is actually from a local store out of their uh, kitchen section but it has all kinds of uh, measurements on the side of it milliliters teaspoons tablespoons this is uh, part b i'll go ahead and put that into the chamber this angle backwards towards the front of the unit shows the uh, float valve it's the uh, white uh, piece of plastic that is in the uh, channel in the middle there there's a lot of uh, water that's kind of uh, splashing up, but typically what you'll have is the plant uh, deck on top of this, and so you wouldn't see all of this. But it's not, uh, it's really not that bad. Just a uh, paper towel, quick wipe, and it, it uh, should take care of it. It's always a good idea to test your unit when you first set it up. You wanna make sure that the water shut off is just where it needs to be that the unit uh, doesn't overfill and possibly damage the electrical board on the front or touch the contacts that i showed you on the back side the water level will be a little higher than what you might anticipate so don't worry about that as a matter of fact uh, we are getting close to where it should shut off and it wouldn't be complete if we didn't uh, try to grow something. So what I've picked out is going to be a short-term plant so you can take a look at how well things grow. Uh, this is from Fairy Morse. It's a uh, bib lettuce. It's an heirloom that's supposed to uh, mature in 43 days. The grow sponge that uh, comes with the unit it has a small hole in the top. It doesn't go all the way through. Overplanting a little bit, just a couple seeds making sure those go down all the way in the bottom, don't stick to the tweezers, so I know they're in there. This is the white seed basket that the sponge goes into. Drop that in. And this clear plastic piece is a humidity dome. And so when we drop this into the unit, what I do is I take a humidity dome and I set that on top until the uh, seeds start to germinate and come up and then I remove those. It just helps to put the perfect uh, amount of moisture around those young seedlings as they start to grow. The white uh, circular pieces that you see are plant spacers. 
The newer LEP pots come with these and it's super helpful if you don't want to start say uh, 21 plants at one time. Uh, 21 might be great for starting out flowers or seedlings for outdoors. Growing lettuce you would like to have those spaced out a little bit and so that's why you see the spacers and then the uh, seedlings of course are what I just showed you and those are in between. So this is number one in a growth series that I'll be doing and look forward to some updates on this in the weeks to come.